Now let's look at some of the resources of the pine tree. First, the obvious wood. It's grown and cultivated for dimensional lumber. So with just an axe and a saw and a few wedges, you can split off boards and make dimensional lumber for making walls, tables, floors, etc. As carving, pine wood is soft. It's easy to carve, and so it can be made into functional objects like plates or trenchers and things like that. But understand, the pine sap, when the wood is green, will add a flavor. So you need to let it dry before you start eating off of it. Otherwise, you get a pine flavor you don't necessarily gonna like, okay? Root cordage. Now, this is one of the things that most people don't think about when they're looking at it. And that's the fact that pine trees have this mass of little wire-like uh, roots that run out from it. You dig down and you hit one of them, and there can be like the size of a pencil and running eight or ten feet long. They make very good cordage to wrap around and bind back upon themselves, and then as they dry, they harden into position. Good for building shelters when you ain't got cordage. Pine can be used for that. Food. Pine trees produce several forms of food. Pine nuts, which come out of the pine cones, are gathered and eat, can be eaten raw. They can also be roasted and adding as a flavoring to other things. I've even had people tell me that they've made a coffee substitute between that and dandelion root. They say it tastes more like coffee together. Haven't tried that. Pine bark bacon. I haven't tried this either, but I've seen videos on it and I've seen people that have swear they've done it and tasted it. And what it is, is the inner bark of the pine tree is turned into a flat piece that's been processed and roasted, for lack of a better term, than eaten like bacon. Inner bark. The inner bark can be shaved into long, thin strips, and these strips can then be taken and boiled and eaten like a noodle or something like that. Again, it is edible. Maybe not terribly palatable, but it is edible and can keep you going when there's nothing else. Pine needle tea, the no-brainer. This was a staple of the old woodsman for millennia. It was a way of getting some vitamin C, getting some minerals, get a little pick-me-up. Now, how to make pine needle tea? You want to start with the small little pine trees because a good mature tree, the first limb's 25 feet up. You ain't going to get that easy. But a young tree, you take the very new buds that are just coming up, the new leaves, and pick them off till you got a good-sized handful. Put you on a little pot of boiling water. As soon as the water comes to a good boil and it's therefore sterilized, set it off the heat. Wait till all the bubbles disappear and then add the pine needles back into the water. You want it on the cooling cycle, not on the coming up cycle. If you do it and boil it, you kind of destroy some of the stuff and you lose some of the good benefits. Let this steep for about 10 minutes and fish out the needles or filter them out sometime. It's actually pretty good. Fire is a fire source. Well, of course, pine wood is a fuel source. It's easily and readily available, easily broken by hand and put into a fire. It does, however, impart a flavor to meats and things if you're roasting over it. So you need to be aware of this. So if I'm boiling something in a pot or whatever, it doesn't matter. But if I'm roasting a sausage, excuse me, roasting a sausage or something out there, it does. The smoke from pine, especially if it's any kind of green, can impart a flavor that you may not like. So just be aware of that when you're using it for cooking. Uh, fat wood, no brainer. Pine trees as they die and dry up become fat wood. This is one big hunk of fat wood right here. This thing can be 20, 30 years old. It won't decay, it won't rot. It can be sopping wet. And you can pull it up, make shavings up, and it'll catch a spark, catch a flame, and burn. My number one go-to in wet conditions. Pine sap, the actual sap of the tree, either fresh or dried, is a fire extender. Think of it like gel gasoline. Take it and smear it on something. It will catch a flame. It will catch a spark. The dried stuff does just as good. Powder it a little bit and hit it with a spark or hit it with a flame and it will catch fire. And it will burn nice, hot, and bubbly and catch other things on fire. So it is like napalm. Walk up to any pine tree and stab it and get some sap and use it as an accelerant to put on something so that when you hit it with a flame, it will catch. Especially when things are wet, the pine sap is going to burn. Pine knots. Pine knots are where the, knot, the limb joins to the tree. And the old woodsmen, when they'd find a down pine, quite often would break those off and tear them to camp. And at night, after they're done cooking everything, they would put pine knots in the fire. That's because it's got fat wood in it and produces a big, tall, bright flame that lit up a large area. And therefore was a source of light with relatively little fuel. You got a relatively big flame out of it. It's a bug repellent. 
you want to look for a dead down rotten pine tree and you've got the center core that's fat wood but it's the spongy rotten soft wood that's what you want you want to put that on the side of the fire and let it smolder the smoke coming off of it repels insects now you can take that once you've smoked it a little bit and you can crush it up a little bit and rub it on you and it will act as an insect repellent on you. Yes, you're going to smell like pine tree, and yes, you're going to get sooty and dirty, but it beats being eaten alive by mosquitoes. Now, as medicine, pine sap is a wound closer. Now, there are much more modern and better ways to do this, but if you ain't got nothing else and you've got to close this up, when I was a boy and we'd be in the field doing something, if I got cut or hurt or whatever, my granddad would walk over to a pine tree and he'd stab it with his knife, and after a minute or two, the pine sap would start running. He'd take that and he'd rub it on the cut and he'd squeeze the cut shut. And that would hold it. He'd also take a young limb, that very small diameter young limb, and he'd split a piece off of it, shave the outer bark, and pull the soft bark off and put it over your finger like a Band-Aid. It would stick because of the bark and it was like a woodsman's Band-Aid. Now, more modern things are better, but if you got no other choice, it does work as a wound closer and something to get you to medical aid. Um, pine tar salve. This is a mixture of pine tar, uh, lard, and tallow, and it's used as a medicinal to put onto irritations and things like that in the skin. Think like Vaseline. Pine tar soap, same idea, different ratio, is used for cleaning and washing and disinfecting. Same thing. Now, miscellaneous, hot hands. The pine tree bark, big, wide sheets of it, was developed to protect the tree from fire. Many of the pines need fire for their cones to open up, but the pine bark is actually remarkably good as insulation. So if you cut off two fairly good sized pieces of bark, you can use them like hot hands to grab a hot pot and pick up and move. They're better insulating than just a plain piece of bark. And you can grab something a lot hotter and not burn your hands. So you can use them like hot hands. Pine straw baskets. Pine straw can be coiled up and sewn, wrapped, and create a tube that you continuously spiral up to make pine straw baskets. Big, usable baskets for multiple use. As well as pine straw cooking. Now, this is something that I spoke of in an earlier thing. Now, I have seen it done, mostly in the summertime. And what would happen is you dig a hole with vertical walls, and then you'd take the pot you're going to use, and you sat it in there, and you made a heavy, thick, packed-down layer of pine straw on the bottom. And then you put the pot in there and you pack pine straw all the way around, just as tight as you can get it. And you want it about three inches below ground surface until you get it packed, blood tight. Make sure the pot's clean. Now in a separate pot, you're gonna bring the food up to a boil and you're gonna get it to boil 10, 20 minutes. And then you're gonna pour it into that pot in the ground. You're gonna put the lid on. You're gonna put a big piece of aluminum foil on it and you're gonna rake hot dirt from the fire. We build our fires up on a mound. So now we move the fire off and we rake that hot dirt over the top and make a mound and we'd go to the field and do whatever else we needed to do. It'll act like a slow cooker. Now you got to remember here in my south, like right now the temperature's in the, like 96, 97. That would still be well over 100 degrees when you got back six, seven hours later and that food would be cooked in there. The pine straw acts like insulation around it, holding the heat. Hay box cooking, do some research on that and you can see that. So, again, pine trees, a resource that's everywhere in America of varying degrees. You need to do the dirt time and see if this list applies to your trees. It may vary due to species. One may be a little more toxic than the other or a little more uh, susceptible or palatable than the other. But that's going to require you doing your research. Now, I want a resource I'm tripping over in all seasons. And the pine tree is one of those. My forests are solid full of them. So no matter what, I can find one. And when I find one, I have a list of resources that I know that they can be used for. And this is just a taste. I'm sure that you out there are going to list another hundred uses I haven't even thought of for the pine tree. But that's how you build your woods knowledge. You start by saying, I'm going to study this and see how many pieces of this puzzle you can bring in until you got a big puzzle that's the pine tree or the willow tree or the walnut tree or the hickory tree or a plantain or whatever plant. Study one 
until you have a real solid working knowledge. Then move on to the next one. I want resources I am tripping over. I don't want, I like to know about that exotic plant, but the one that I have to spend a week trying to find is not going to help me out in a crisis situation. I want a pine tree. Hope this helps, guys. Please leave any questions or comments below. And as always, thank you very much for subscribing to my channel. And please leave any questions or comments below. Till next time, I'm Blackie for Shaman's Forge wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.